Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. I wanted to take a little bit to uh, discuss uh, the overall market. Uh, when I mean overall market, I mean it really kind of revolves around uh, precious metals as of today. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on uh, right now. Uh, some, some are saying that we are still semi in a pandemic. Uh, there, there's some pretty nasty stuff going on um, uh, in uh, Ukraine and Russia and all that stuff. That's also kind of playing a huge part in um, uh, the overall uh, just price movements and everything going on right now. Um, and there, there's been there's been some talk about how there are some uh, some parallels and similarities to the 2008 recession era, uh, where as of right now we're dealing with ridiculous inflation for a lot of things. I, I think we're we're probably feeling it a lot more in general consumer goods um, and gas, right? I mean, um, the, the, the big meme is, uh, <laughs> and I actually played a joke, you know, because I got gas this morning because I needed it. I need to get gas based out of fear that it's going to continue to rise. Um, yeah, $5 gas in, in California is no joke, but it's not the first time that we've seen that. Uh, as a matter of fact, the last time that we saw it was right around 2008. Now, there there are certain similarities, but I want to let a lot of people know out there that's kind of playing on the, this this uh, this parallel that we witnessed 14 years ago compared to what's going on today because there are a lot of things that are also very different and then you're just gonna have to kind of gauge and assess where these new X factors are going to uh, influence um, the collectibles market uh, and of course in this video we talk a lot about coins and currency um, but you're going to have to kind of think about it, uh, kind of think outside of the box. I, I know that's kind of like an overused term, uh, but, you know, you just can't help but to think, what do I do? Do I sell when the price is high? Um, do I hold on to my money? Of course, there's no guarantees. You know, the, the inflation, the cost of a, of the what you can get for a dollar is, is nothing like it used to be 25, 30 years ago. Uh, so we have a lot of things to cover. First of all, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the markets this morning. Okay, we're on coinflation.com. We're seeing that silver has catapulted another dollar. Okay, keep in mind, a few weeks ago, price of silver was down to like $22 to $23 an ounce. So we're seeing upward pressures. And then, of course, you're seeing all of these various articles uh, within the last week. There's the, the sanctions that Europe and U.S. is imposing um, that, that'll kind of influence the precious metals market. That's important to know, um, you know, along with everything going on uh, outside of that. And, and then now we're back to uh, $2,000 gold. It shot up another $61 an ounce, where at $2,059.50 is what we're looking at. So, uh, with all of this extra activity influencing the precious metals market, all right, are we beginning to see a pre kind of um, crystal ballish type of uh, outlook uh, of the 2008 recession? I don't know. Okay, that's really the thing I don't know. Would love to hear you guys' thoughts on what you believe is going to happen. Okay, we do know that consumer goods are up, gasoline is up, price of barrel. Uh, the price of a barrel of oil is uh, up over $100 a barrel again, uh, similar to what we were experiencing 14 years ago. Uh, but you, you saw a lot of instances where people were dumping their money into things like precious metals, coins, um, as a, a safe haven. Okay, they're just going to park their money there um, so that way, you know, they can decide when to pull out at, at its at its crest. I think silver got to like $56 an ounce back in early 2010, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I don't know. Uh, we, we are definitely seeing some movement. Uh, but to kind of like also just preface a lot of the things that I did say, the big differences that we're seeing right now outside of consumer goods and oil, 
is going to be what exactly happened to cause the recession during that time. In 2008, there was a lot of pressure uh, as a result of the uh, ridiculous home prices. There was a housing crisis. Uh, people were paying a million dollars for a home that, you know, just a few years before that were genuinely worth about 250 to 300K. Um, there, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of funky, weird loans out there. You guys remember the the ridiculously stupid adjustable rate mortgages that the banks had available. I, I mean, there there was a lot of things uh, that that really hurt the housing market, which ultimately led to this recession. Um, and as a result, people had been parking their money into PMs and along with some other stable commodities, uh, coins being one of them, because coins just just rose to unseen record territory uh it wasn't until about 2012 where we began to see some stabilization in uh both of those collectibles uh whether it's uh, investing in pms or uh in coins and uh you know it, again it was very gradual it's not something that took years for the market to stabilize and kind of uh, uh just drop to the point where it was comfortable um where we saw probably the lowest point in, in numismatics was 2015. And it stayed that way until the beginning of the pandemic. So today, compared to 14 years ago, we have some like major things, okay? We have this pandemic, which obviously put things into a whole new tailspin. We have the cryptocurrency market as well, which is adding a completely new element to the game. How is that being affected? A lot of people made tons of money. Um, are we just seeing uh, a, a lot of appreciation for PMs and coins because people made so much damn money during this cryptocurrency boom of 2020? Again, there's a lot of things going on. Now, of course, you know, just as we feel like the uh, pandemic is coming to a close, then we have all this other stuff going on. Um, in Eastern Europe, that's really just, it's exacerbating, it's tiring, and it's really making people think, uh, think, you know, if not irrationally, they're probably, uh, they're, they're probably trying to, to be a little bit more, I don't know, smart with the money. All right. And, uh, I know the world doesn't entirely revolve around money, but it really does. You know, money uh, is a huge driving force to a lot of things that goes on in the economy in the world today uh but it's definitely worth uh just kind of talking about it so there's a lot of things going on um i would say it's nothing like 2008 uh yeah sure home prices are pretty high right now uh but we didn't deal with the ridiculous uh lending options that a lot of people had uh, had participated in uh, to where it led to a lot of foreclosures and bankruptcies and all sorts of other neat, unneeded things at the time. Uh, so, yeah, pretty crazy. But as far as how this affects some of our favorite precious metals, let's go ahead and take a quick look at and see what the sales look like for 2021 Silver Eagles. You know, it's like that. that is one of the most popular invested physical forms of silver is the silver eagle and we're just going to use last year's model uh we see both the type one and type two sales here by a notable seller on ebay uh type ones of course has that outgoing reverse of 86 this one right here sold for 43 dollars and 17 cents which seems like it hasn't changed right it's like the imposed premiums on silver bullion in all forms from silver eagles to generics and then to junk have all been elevated by a good 10 15 20 percent and up all right depending on what you get uh as you can see silver is at 26 dollars an ounce this one sold this morning for 43 dollars i mean that's a pretty substantial premium to pay on one silver eagle uh 15 dollars an ounce or a lot more now 18 18 dollars 26 no, $17, sorry. Can't even do math this morning. Uh, and then, of course, here's one of those Type 2s, which is the newer reverse, $38. So even still, we're that's a $12 premium above what spot silver value is uh, as of right now. Uh, let's see if we can find a few more. Here's another one here, $38. All right, so that's the Type 2, which is kind of like the new standard 
Uh, here's a lot of five for 180 bucks for the most part. Um, let's see, which is what? 30. Five dollars a piece, thirty-six. So it's all in line uh, for, for the premiums. Um, but this is what it is today. All right. So what did it look like about thirty days ago? So I actually pulled up data from thirty days ago. Here's a Type One that sold for with shipping thirty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents. So we're we're seeing uh, a little bit of price increase on physical non-graded bullion standard form of Silver Eagle. Uh, let's see if we can find another one in here for around that that particular time period. A lot of graded stuff, by the way, are being sold. Uh, but, you know, there is very little influence. Uh, people are just naturally paying up for both Proof 69 and Proof 70 uh, coins in all of its forms. So, um, yeah, it looks like there's more graded being sold than there is actual just ungraded uh, silver. I think there's... A little bit of a realization that people are finding out that they're making a little bit more money sending their bullion out to NGC and PCGS, which is a, a ridiculous notion because it costs money to grade these things. You would almost have to, um, it, you would almost have to pay a lot more money to do that, and then you know sell it for a lot more money to make up uh, some of the money that you had spent for the submission fees. So here's a uh, two coin lot for $72. So we're at $36 per piece for this one here. That's a type one lot, uh, which has a little bit bigger premium because it's the outgoing uh, uh, reverse design. And some are saying that it, is, it has a lot lower mintage. So there's a little bit of a key date factorization involved with the type one coins. Uh, but more realistically, uh, here's one right here that's sold for $67.12 with shipping, uh, which comes out to $33, $33.5 per piece. So we're seeing we're seeing the physical form of the coins, or the bullion rather, begin to increase. Uh, you guys can certainly go and check, you know, Engelhard bars, generics, and all that stuff. You're going to see, again, the same kind of increase. You're seeing uh, these these pieces sell uh, for a one ounce to one ounce basis. Now there's going to be like much larger uh, ingots and stuff like that that are uh, just wildly out of proportion. But when it comes to just generic one ounce type of bullion, rounds, bars, that sort of thing, you're going to see just a uh, an increase across the board for all of that. And it's also worth mentioning that some of the new mint products, okay, I talked about this a few days ago about how insane the sell prices of the new silver proof set coins, most specifically this one right here, the American Women Quarters Silver Proof Set, which is only five coins, guys. Only five coins. They're all triple nine fine silver quarters uh, for $73. And believe me, if the market gets way too out of whack, and let's say we see another 10, 15, 20% increase in uh, in silver market, let's say if uh, between now and the release of this quarter program, which is, by the way, the 29th of this month, so it's only, what, three, three and a half weeks out, let's say price of silver goes from uh, what it is right now uh, at 26.75. And then jumps up to say thirty, thirty-two dollars an ounce by the end of the month, if not higher. You're gonna see the U.S. Mint change us on the fly. You know they'll jack it up to seventy-six dollars a set. Then they'll jack it up to eighty-two, eighty-six. And you're gonna see some of the most irrational kind of prices coming from the mint products. The mint is only adjusting to the market. Okay, uh, they they're of course uh, a slave. To suppliers and vendors that you know provide them with some of the raw materials, uh, so obviously they're going to be paying a lot more money for some of these items as well. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking to buy some of these upcoming uh, proof sets and silver eagles and commemoratives. Expect to see a, a last-minute price increase on a lot of these because they've been notorious for doing that. We saw that. In last year's coins, when they had the uh, the silver proof set that was available a lot earlier, they had those available for like sixty some dollars or seventy dollars, 
And then toward the end of the year, they jacked them up to like $100, all right? Uh, but that's based off of demand and a few other market conditions. The availability of the raw materials, the silver, uh, the raw silver, things like that. Uh, obviously, they're paying more for it. They're passing that to, to the consumers all the while still trying to offer a product. And another thing before I let you guys know, if we're going to see pretty big substantial price increases, okay, also expect to see less people buying into them and shorter uh, mintages, which is going to be an interesting thing. Now, I might be completely wrong and off base and people are going to flock to these things uh, because they can't find other physical forms of silver. and They're just going to buy these at any cost. All right, that might change the game. But I have a feeling that if these things get way too like out of reach price wise, price wise, where it's an irrational purchasing decision for a U.S. mint product, you're going to see a lot more people pulling back. They're not going to be buying as many, and expect to see mintages drop on a lot of the silver sets and individual coins this year. It's going to be interesting to kind of see how this all develops, but. That's why I wanted to talk about today a little bit of a market activity. Price of silver is up. Price of gold is up. Price of platinum and palladium are up. Everything is kind of like the, the, the hammer is officially dropping and people are starting to find safe haven for their cash. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, by the way, is no guarantee that it's going to be a place where you can park money. We've seen a little bit of an increase in the uh, crypto market here as of late. That's all as a response of the things going on in Eastern Europe. You know, I don't exactly hinge my personal faith in pouring money into that because there's still a lot of unknowns. How will it kind of react to some of the severe, uh, severe conditions going on in the marketplace, but also around the world? You know, that, that's, that's a big outlying kind of question mark on cryptocurrency because it doesn't respond the same way as a regular NYSE, you know, the stock exchange, NASDAQ, and, and the Nikkei, and all this other stuff, okay? It's like, it's it performs completely different and independent. It's highly speculative. Um, you know, one investor could cash out a uh, billion dollars in crypto, and it would just could completely tank the market. You just never know how it's all going to pan out because of the uncertainty in the world. All right, but that's what I want to talk about. I want to take that moment to talk about this. We don't do these type of videos that often where I get really deep into PMs and the market and all that stuff. I'm more of the coin and collectibles guy. But let's not all kind of react to how this could be the next 2008 and people are just automatically dumping money into every physical collectible thing not sports cards and all that guys okay those things are not going to be affected the same way that coins and other different monetary instruments are going to be affected as a result of what some are saying is going to be a pending recession that's all the news right now that i want to talk about thank you guys for joining in on this video don't forget to like share subscribe hit that bell let me know what your thoughts are what are you doing what are you noticing is there anything that you're doing differently today other than hoarding gas? Because I do know people that are actually doing that right now. Uh, but that's it. You guys take care. Have a blessed day. I'll see you on the next coin video. So long.